Hey, check it out. Check out who's here. Ransom. 420 TV, Freedomist Films, is that it? Yep. Yeah, I'll give you links below. We're out here to check out how high the groundwater is. Gremlin's doing some investigating over there. And so the object here is to order some uh, fingerling fish, maybe perch and bass and sunnies, because this isn't connected to the river, so I can put anything I want in here, you know? There's yeah, no environmental. But I don't think I want to put trout in here because there's tons of trout in the river. So get some different fish in here. Get some GMO salmon. Nah, we won't do that, but what you're looking at is a huge uh, restoration for the cottonwoods that are... These cottonwoods are suffering down here because the trauma diversion, which takes 90% of our glacial river runoff and sends it down to New Mexico, destroyed this valley. And when they put that diversion tunnel in, it killed all the cottonwoods. And you can see over here that giant cottonwood that's dead. Um, they used to be everywhere here. Now everything's a small cottonwood or a giant dying cottonwood. You know, what this marsh system will do is allow us to grow rice and uh, other types of like aquatic food, lilies, plus fish. And it's also rewatering the whole valley, which is going to green up this valley, which is a desert. And it also cool it down because we have all this water surface area that's going to be wind blowing on. Yeah. So it might be pretty nice to chill around here um, in oh, the summer, oh, which, oh, is, which is why it will come out here. I made these cool mounds so that if you have UTVs, it's like kind of like a little park. We're gonna huck it back here to where we have a collapsed tent where I was storing some things and try to assess the damage. Here's our luxury r rental, 42 bucks a month. We're gonna get in a good workout. It's very difficult to, to walk on whatever you call this slush. This is gonna be one of two circular ponds that are in the system. And you can see it's not finished. That'll be a little place for yoga and reflecting. Put a bridge across to it. And there'll be another smaller island here. So the waterway is going to go under the road here and continue in through the willow where there'll be a shallower marsh. And then whoever lives in that tiny house, wow, they're going to have a good time. All right, we'll be right back. All right, we're down at the Blanco River, which means white. And you can see the color. It's kind of like a greenish milkiness. This is the glacial dust that's coming from the Continental Divide draining this river. Now this river, uh, back in 1960, was 10 times more volume. So it's running at about 50 CFS, let's say now. It was at 500, like the San Juan River. And then they stole the water and sent it to New Mexico due to some backhand deal. And what they did was they ruined the entire 11 mile stretch of this native river that contained some of the most wild trout and, and then it became a shit swamp. The community organized and sued the federal government and for the first time ever they won. And this is the only river in the US that has been restored to one tenth scale. The entire 14 mile stretch I think. So in another mile this river ends and it doesn't exist anymore and it dumps right into the San Juan about a mile upstream. Somewhere in right near the Indian Reservation. The Ute Reservation. So obviously that was hurting the San Juan River too, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, because you had all this hot water dumping in there. Now it's cold water dumping in there. So the fishery is back. This river, like as soon as April, as soon as this melts out, there'll be brown trout and huge like 16 inch rainbows that come up in here. And then in the summer, the trout population is like more like an 11 inch um, cutthroat because it gets real low but the crayfish population in here is like you can have a barbecue 
have a crawl dead fry. A pot of crawl dead. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty awesome spot. Gremlin likes it. Saturday, March 23rd. It's beautiful. Looks like the neighbor's moving a tree there. It's been up to 63 this week. We just got done a winter storm, which completely covered the Continental Divide. But the desert, the south face here, there's no more snow. There's a few piles lying around, and you can see it's drying up. <laughs> Now is the time that the greenhouse starts to come up above uh, 30 at night. And we're going to go in and see the progress of our plantings. You can immediately see that our arugula bed is just about a week away from harvest. All the seedlings coming up. Here I even see, look at this. This is a Gerber daisy that made it through the, the rootstock, didn't freeze. This Gerber daisy is going to come up. It's going to be amazing. We got some wild dandelion. And the peas look great. This is our arugula and spinach bed. Literally going to be amazing shortly. Notice how I have these clovers coming up. I want to keep these alive in here and just rip off the greenery. And that's going to be setting nitrogen. If you don't kill the root and you kill the green, you get green mulch and then I just fix some nitrogen in the ground here. So that's a way you can be uh, fertilizing through the chop and drop method where you just pick and chuck. And that's also going to make this parsley a lot stronger and come out a little greener. You can see that the uh, lemon thyme is really coming green again. The entire... Zone 7 to 9 plum tree is completely flowered. We have some insects in here. So hopefully they're pollinating this baby. I just go touch it a lot. I just touch it a lot and move my fingers around. But there's all kind of bugs in here. So hopefully they're going to... We don't want this many plums on here, clearly. We can also see the blueberry is now leafing out and budding. So it'll be interesting to see how the blueberry does in here. We have some lettuces coming up. We have this brassica seeding, so we'll be able to watch you through a spring seeding cycle. A lot of the garlic is looking good. The tree, the white tree kale that we uh, trained is looking amazing. And we have a couple more little white tree kales coming up here. These are all spinach sprouts and starts. This is our radish area. All the sprouts are up. They need to be thinned. We got some great lettuces already going to be able to harvest this to do some fresh salads starting now um, or in a week and it's going to be non-stop. If you remember three weeks ago we planted a huge shard bed. I've been thinning them. These are the shards. So usually I keep one or two together every four inches and we'll get a solid wall of shard out of this. So you'll watch how that progresses. The shard's coming up nice. None of the shard looks stunted. We've got some other brassicas in here. Some sorrel. Everything's looking good. The mint is popping. Red Russian kale tree looks good. Collard trees all look good. So in general, we're rocking in here. Good start. We got the last flat of fodder for the chickens or for my wheatgrass machine. Either way. And a nice red Russian kale out here. So let's check the temps. It's 92 in the greenhouse. 94 was the high. 35 was the low last night. It was 28 outside for the low and a 43 for the high so far today. Those are the stats. 43 outside, 92 in here. It's a pretty good deal. Looking amazing in here. So... Grow food, it's free and delicious. No chemicals in this baby. Spring has sprung.
All the medicine is elsewhere, if you know what I mean. But food is medicine. If you eat proper nutrition, you'll never get sick. You'll never die early. You're just going to feel great. Start now. We'll show you how.